This book is called Consider the Fork, and it's fascinating. It's about the history of technology as reflected in eating utensils. In other words, forks, knives, spoons, pans, fire, and the way that different cultures through time have used these. And it's a really interesting way to look at the history of technology, the way that the material circumstances of our lives have changed thanks to the ideas and cultures that we live in. One fact from the book that absolutely blew my mind is that our teeth have changed in the last couple hundred years. Skeletons of humans typically have an overbite. Your top teeth tend to overhang your lower teeth. In Western cultures, this is the way that this is, and we kind of assume that this is natural. Now, the funny thing is, in European skeletons from about 300 years ago, say pre-1750s, they don't have the same bite. The teeth are different. The teeth are paired, so the top teeth match the bottom teeth exactly the same way that a chimpanzee's teeth do. Prior to that time, one of the most common ways to eat was probably to tear your food or to hold it when you cut it in your teeth, and they were used more for the tearing motion. If you do that from a young age, your teeth naturally grow into a paired bite, just like a chimpanzee. If you grow up at a young age eating food that has been cut with a knife and fork, you don't. An interesting thing is the Chinese, who have been using finely cut food and chopsticks for a long, long time, more than a thousand years, have had that overbite for about a thousand years, which is really cool. Our technology affects the way that we live, and it affects our culture, and then the culture affects the technology, and it's all part of this massive web. When I was on my trip in New Zealand, I had an opportunity to see clay on the banks of, a, of the seaside. The Polynesian cultures were unique in that they knew about pottery, and had a long history with pottery, and then stopped using pottery and lost it. And that's kind of a bizarre thing. We tend to think of technology going in a straight line and more and more and more advanced. It's not entirely true. Another culture that lost wheel-thrown pots, at least, was England after the Romans left. They stopped making wheel-thrown pottery for a while. One explanation is that they forgot cultural upheaval. The last potter died and suddenly there's no way to pass it forward. But another possibility is maybe it wasn't relevant to their culture anymore. And that seems to be the case in Polynesia, where if you're cooking rice, you kind of have to have a pot. But if you're cooking taro or other starchy root vegetables, you know, you could have a pot or you could bake it in the fire. And if you're cooking breadfruit, you know, you can boil these things in a wooden bowl just by putting hot rocks in the wooden bowl with some water. And then they boil the water and cook the vegetables. And it turns out that actually works as well or better. They also use a process called hangi, which is the pit oven that is famous from the luau in Hawaii and it's called Hangi in New Zealand. It seems to be that pottery was lost because it wasn't relevant anymore. I had a chance to visit the Maori Cultural Center at Wakarawarawa, and there they have hot pots and geysers, which are used for everything from channeling water into the bathing area, where they have outdoor bathing tanks, but also it's used to cook food. I mean, if, if you have this giant thing here, and you could boil your food just by putting it in a, a rope kind of bag and just dipping it in for 20 minutes, or you could cook it by, you know, creating this separate implement and lighting a fire which uses fuel and then doing it that way. I mean, it stops being relevant, at least for that community, and seems for Polynesia as a whole. The pottery was phased out because it wasn't relevant. This is an example of a place where our conception of technology as linear is challenged, and where you see that it's related to your circumstances, in terms of what crops you're growing, how you like to eat your food, what meal times typically look like for the family, and cultural attitudes toward what cooking should look like. But that, that, that affects what technology you have and what is considered to be important. I have enjoyed reading this book. It's blown my mind a couple of times. The comments about teeth and that chapter was fascinating. The chapter on knives and the way that we've used knives was fascinating particularly since carrying an eating knife with you was common in European families for forever. Everybody carried a knife. Everybody. And when you went to eat, you used your own knife, and that was the way it was. And these were sharp knives, and because everybody carried knives, I mean, it was your work tool, it was your eating utensil, and if you happened to get in a duel, it was the thing that you could reach for at any time. However, cultural attitudes changed such that they started blunting their knives, 
Legend has it that Cardinal Richelieu blunted all his knives so that people wouldn't stab each other at his dinner table. That's interesting to me that our, our cultural attitudes toward violence have changed in the last 300 years approximately, and that's affected the way that we eat. So now we have to eat with blunt, useless dinner knives. And then if you want to actually cut your steak, you have to get a separate knife, not a table knife, but a steak knife, which does the thing that the table knife should be able to do if it weren't for 300 years of culture. I finished the chapters about fire, knives, and pots, but there's still more to go. I've been enjoying it tremendously. I will recommend the part that I have read. If you're interested in the book, please see the link in the description below. And if you too are interested in the history of technology and in the kitchen, please leave a comment below with your favorite kitchen implement and maybe why. And if you're new to the channel and interested in the history of technology and the values and what it says about us, please hit the subscribe button below. Thank you.